What's up YouTube, the Bill Paying Hobbyist here. I'm Michael, behind the camera is Ellie. We're just trying to save up for a down payment on a house and keep our debt down by using our hobbies and skill sets and just having a lot of fun. Last time I made a bolt action pen with some deer antler and a customer saw it and she wanted to buy one for a friend of hers, but he has bigger hands. So we're gonna make this one a little bit different than the last one. Let's get to it. The first thing I need to do is figure out how long I'm gonna cut it. So basically, I'm just gonna lay it out, figure out where I'm gonna get the most meat, take a Sharpie, make a mark, take it over to the bandsaw. Now with using the bandsaw, I'm just gonna square off one end, get rid of my sled, and then cut on the mark on the other side. Now I just need to make sure that I did cut it actually long enough and I still have enough meat so that when I drill my hole, it goes right through the center of the biggest part. I'm gonna use my homemade clamp to hold the antler this time. It just, it's an oblong shape and I need something that's gonna grip on it really well. And then I'm gonna make sure it's really, really flat so that my hole's nice and straight. I'm gonna take my time while I'm drilling that hole. All right, I'm using my JB Weld five minute epoxy for this. It's a two part epoxy. You stir it up for 30 seconds and you have five minutes of working time. It says it's ready to go in five minutes, but I let it sit overnight. Okay, so this is our time to dry overnight and we're ready to turn it. Now remember, we're making this a little bit bigger, the comfort fit for someone with a bigger hand, so much bigger than mine. We'll use the one we did before with this kit as a comparison, we got to make it bigger than this one. So, I mean, and this just shows you that each pen is different. And we're going to see as we turn this one, the different patterns and stuff we're going to have in the antler when we're done with it. So first I'm going to get it round and then I'm going to figure out how much bigger I want this one to be than this one. And I have to be careful if I make it too big, that clip is going to look really weird. So I have to be careful how I taper it the bigger side is gonna actually have to be towards the center and the bottom towards the tip than it is towards the back and the end cap. So first of all, let's get it turned. Should probably sand this down first. So I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I normally don't do this first, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sand my ends to my tube and get that out of the way. Backing plate with 120, is that 120? 120 grit sandpaper. On this end, number two more is drill truck. Drill chuck. I'm gonna go ahead and lock it in. And then I'm gonna find a pin, a punch pin. This goes in here. And I like to let it sit. Something I was taught. I like to let it sit right in there. So it has something to rest on and it helps keep it straight. There. Now when I sand it, this is going to make it perpendicular to the tube, which is perfect. I'm going to have my lathe at about 1300 while I sand this. Now I want to take off some of these sharp edges and stuff. Definitely that before I start turning it because I don't want to get, I don't want my tip, my carbide blade to get caught on that. So I'm just going to use this. Turn the vacuum back on. We're all ready to go. I'm going to turn at about 2600, 2800. And I'm gonna take my time until I start getting past all of this roughness. I gotta go very slow. And I'm gonna use my round chisel, carbide tip. It's pretty nice. Got this nice line right here. It's rough right now, but we'll get it all nice and cleaned up. I'm gonna use my square tip now because I'm gonna try to get in here as close as I can to this bushing 
I'm not gonna leave it this flat, this fat. That's way too fat for anyone. But I wanna get these as close as I can to the bushings and then I'll feather this out. This one in the center is a 35-64s. This one is currently at 81-128. That's probably where we want to go with that one. This one's decent. It's good for me. This one's a little bit fatter for him. Should be nice. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more for that clip. So we want to bring that down just a little bit more right there. I'm going to leave that outside there though. And now I'm going to change out my bushings so that I don't sand them. You don't want to sand your bushings. Especially when you're using wood because if you're using wood and you sand your bushings, you're going to bring the shavings from the bushings into the wood. I'm going to turn this back down to 1300 and sand. In between each, I'm going to sand longitudinal of the blank so that I can get any spiral lines out of it. First thing I need to do is clean it. And this is denatured alcohol on a paper towel. I want to get all the dust out of it. If I leave any dust in there, when I go to put my finish on here, the dust will, particles will actually turn white. Now, I'm going to finish it. Well, I'm going to put a finish on it. And to do that, we use CA glue right there. There you go. Medium, fine, or thin. We use the medium first. And these are just shop towels that I cut up. I so just took a shop towel, rolled it up, and then flattened it out and cut it into like close to one inch pieces. All right, now it looks nice and shiny and smooth and everything, that's nice, but I have very small lines in here and that's from my fingers and the paper towel in the finish and I need to smooth that out. This may seem counterintuitive, but it's important. I'm gonna use Abernet, which is just another form of sandpaper. It's a mesh sandpaper, it goes from 180 to 400 and I'm just gonna very lightly sand this, dull it up and smooth out these little bitty imperfections in it and it will give you a so much better shot. So back up to 1300. This is micro mesh. All right, it goes from 400, which is this side, to about 12,000, which is that maroon purplish color. Not a lot of water. And I'm gonna do a higher, higher speed polish for this one. I'm gonna see how much I can make it shine. I'm gonna put that baby up to 1800.
That's pretty. But we're not done. I also like to use glass polish. And one more Renaissance wax. That is pretty. Well, let's look at it next to this one. Big difference, huh? In size. All right, so let's get it off of here and let's get it pressed together on our pen kit. Now that that's done, let's get this out of the way. And I'm gonna use my lathe to press these together. I was gonna use my drill press, but I decided against it. It's a really cool piece. Just a piece of three quarter inch plywood. It's got two little earth magnets on the back side of it. And you put it right here. So if this ever gets stuck or whatever you put in your tail spot gets stuck, you just turn it and it pops it right off for you. You don't have to use a tool to pop it out from the back side. Boom, that's done. All right. I have these two pieces here that I made on the lathe. One's bigger than the other. The big one will go here, the little one here. And then I can use my lathe as a horizontal press. And this pen kit is, it's the same pen kit, it's just a different color. This one is in gunmetal. So let's get the pieces out. We got our tip, generic eat cartridge. I love how PSI wraps these. They actually do these a pretty good job on this. Penn State Industries with these. I mean, some of the kits you get are not the most spectacular but they're bolt action and they do a great job on. Spring, don't ever lose your spring. This is our end cap. And when I do this one, I'm gonna take off my clip. See how it's beautiful metal. It's a gun metal finish. Like a deep gray. Tip. And I'm also gonna upgrade the ink cartridge. I'm gonna put in a gel. This is a gel ink cartridge, Parker. All right, so let's see. Well, we're gonna need our blank, our beautifully polished blank. Now remember, I'm gonna use this, this area right here. This is a gradual taper. That's gonna go towards the tip. That's gonna go towards the end. But this time I'm gonna take the clip off before I press it together so that I'm not scratching any surfaces because this is so much fatter. Put this back on, you don't want to mess up your threads. Done. Now we just unscrew the tip. We drop our cartridge in, hold it right there. Take my spring. If you look at the spring, this side is a little bit bigger than that side. I want that side to go down because I want it to catch on to the ink cartridge. Oh, take that off. And that way it seats nice and tight on there. Well, that one's, oh, I forgot, it's the gel. The gels, you can't do that because they have a little lip right there and it stops your spring from going all the way down. You can do it. Um, it just causes a lot more tension in the spring. Let me show you. Seat that down right there. Tighten it down. It just makes this a little bit strong. It's, it's actually not bad, so we'll leave it there. That is a beautiful pen. I think they're really gonna like it. Oh, fat, that's fat. Let's see how it writes. Oh, that's pretty nice. All right, it's time for numbers. Now for time and materials, we're looking at about $15. 
For tools and supplies, we're looking at around $50. So that's $65 to make this pen. I sold it for $85. That gives us a profit of $20. The customer is going to love this pen. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Give us some comments down below. If you're getting value out of our videos, please subscribe, like, and share. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when we send out new videos. Again, thanks for watching. We enjoyed making this. We'd love to hear from you. Logan's going crazy. Logan's going crazy. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one, and we love you.